Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be examining some terms that are related to economic geography. Economic geography is a sub-branch of human geography, which focuses on economic resources and activities, especially in relation to their locations and the factors influencing their locations. All right, so here is a list of some of the terms that we will be talking about in this video. The, econ the economy can be viewed as a system made up of interdependent components. These components include households, industry or economic activities, the government and resources. These components function together to ensure that people's economic needs are satisfied by available resources through the exchange of money. Resources can be broadly divided into human and natural resources. Human resources refer to people along with their knowledge, skills, talents, and abilities. Natural resources are features of the environment used by people to satisfy their wants and needs. Natural resources such as crops, fish, trees, and rivers which are replenished by nature as fast or faster than they are used up are called renewable resources. Natural resources found beneath the earth, which when consumed does not replenish at the same speed at which it is used up are called non-renewable resource. Non-renewable resources include fuels such as oil, coal, and natural gas, as well as minerals such as iron and bauxite. Non-renewable resources take millions of years to form. Now, natural resources are extracted and or harvested by primary industries, which include fishing, mining, farming, and so forth. These industries produce raw materials. Some raw materials can be consumed in their natural state while others will need to be altered or processed in order to be useful. This processing of raw material is carried out by secondary industries. Secondary industries add value to the raw material. They include manufacturing industries and construction industries. Both primary and secondary ind industries create tangible products or goods. Tertiary industries, on the other hand, do not involve the creation of tangible products, but rather the provision of services. The services provided by tertiary industries are not only for individuals, but also for other industries. So, for example, uh, some tertiary industries help to promote and distribute the products that are created at the primary and secondary industries. 
to get the work done for the production of goods and services industries employ workers. Employment is the involvement of people in economic activities in exchange for income. At the end of the work period, employees are given an income for their labor. Income refers to the money that a person or entity receives in exchange for their labor or even for products which have been sold. With this income, employees can pay their bills as well as purchase goods and other services. The level of employment in a country therefore increases the purchasing power of the people. Purchasing power is the ability to pay for goods and services. A market is a situation in which the exchange of goods and services takes place as a result of buyers and sellers interacting. This interaction can occur both face-to-face -face as well as online. Through the market, buyers and buyers spend while sellers earn an income. Now, the total value of all goods and services produced in a country within a year is known as the gross domestic product, abbreviated GDP. The illustration shows the money value of goods and services produced in country A by four different industries. Notice that the level of production varies from one industry to another. When we add up the money value of the goods and services produced by all four industries, we get $10,000, which gives us the GDP of country A. Now within country A, there are 10 persons or a population of 10. We want to know what each person would receive if the GDP were to be divided equally among the members of the population. So we divide the $10,000 by 10 and we get $1,000. This is the GDP per capita. GDP per capita is a country's GDP divided by its total population. The GDP per capita helps us to determine the standard of living of a country. And when we talk about standard of living, we're talking about the level of wealth, comfort, material goods, and necessities available to people in a country. Transactions are not confined to interactions between sellers and buyers only within a country. Transactions can be extended to the interactions between sellers and buyers between countries as well. When a country sends goods and services to another country for sale, it is known as export. On the other hand, when goods and services are brought into the country from abroad for sale, it is called import. A summary of all economic transactions between a country and the rest of the world is known as the balance of payment. Under this heading of balance of payment, we can talk about balance of payment surplus and balance of payment deficit. A balance of payment surplus exists when a country 
exports more goods and services than it imports. This means that the country is earning more foreign exchange than it is paying out. A balance of payment deficit, on the other hand, exists when a country imports more goods and services than it exports. This means that the country is paying out more foreign currency than it is earning. In the illustration, country A has a balance of payment deficit, while country B has a balance of payment surplus. Countries with a balance of payment deficit often incur a debt burden, which is a large amount of money that one country owes to another and find difficult to pay. When a country does not have enough money to start and or operate its industries, the government may have to seek the assistance of foreign investors. Foreign investment refers to capital flows from one country to another in exchange for significant ownership stakes in domestic companies and assets. The capital which flows into the country can help to boost the economy by increasing employment and production. For the source country of the foreign investment, money will be returned into the economy through the profits from the overseas business. This brings us to another term. You have already been introduced to gross domestic product. Now we're going to be talking about gross national product or GNP. The gross national product measures the total economic output of a country, including earnings from foreign investments. As people migrate to other countries, they find that the ability to pay for goods and services will change. That is, there is a change of the purchasing power from one country to another. So we can talk about purchasing power parity or PPP. This refers to how much things would cost if all countries used the same currency. It is the rate at which one currency would need to be exchanged to have the same purchasing power as another currency. So here's a look back at the terms or at least to some of the terms that we've discussed. Let's take a few minutes to see how we can apply these terms to the industries that we study under the CSEC syllabus, the CSEC geography syllabus, that is. The fishing industry of Belize is a primary industry focusing on the extraction of renewable resources. The oil and natural gas mining industry of Trinidad and Tobago is also a primary industry. However, it focuses on the extraction of non-renewable resources. The oil and natural gas industry of Trinidad and Tobago is very expensive to operate. And therefore one source of its capital is foreign investment. The main market for both the products of Belize's fishing industry and the products of Trinidad and Tobago's oil and natural gas industry is the USA. In the process of exporting these products, to the USA, foreign exchange is earned. This money 
can then be used to pay for goods and services imported into the country. Agriculture in the Caribbean has experienced a lot of changes. For example, the benefits it has received in the past from its European market has largely decreased. As such, many countries in the Caribbean have had to seek other markets. Unfortunately, many Caribbean countries import more food than they export, resulting in a balance of payment deficit and a large debt burden. One of the main secondary industries in the Caribbean is the food processing industry. This industry contributes to food security and also provide goods for export. This industry is also one of the main markets for the agricultural goods produced in Caribbean territories. The size of these food processing industries vary from small to very large. Some of the large food processing industries have overseas branches and income from these branches contribute to the gross national product, which in turn help to raise the standard of living for the citizens. One of the main tertiary industries in the Caribbean is tourism industry, which provides accommodation and recreational services to both local as well as overseas visitors. The main tourist markets are North America and Europe, which are accessible to the Caribbean. The industry provides employment to locals who receive an income for offering exceptional services to the visitors. This income increases the purchasing power of the employees. For most Caribbean countries, tourism is the largest contributor to the gross domestic product. Okay, so I hope that this was useful to you. Now it's time for you to find some past paper questions and practice using these terms. Once again, I want to thank you very much for your continued support. If you have not yet subscribed, hey, please go ahead and do so. And don't forget to like this video and to share it with somebody else.